Okay, um, this is the first time I've been on camera and watched myself in OBS, so if I'm really awkward, no apologies. So this is Devlog9, and another thing I'm going to be doing for the first time is world building. Uh, what I mean by this is creating a fantasy map that we're going to use in Shield Maidens. I had some ideas prior, so I read a couple articles online, binged watched some YouTube videos, but I think the best way that I'm going to learn is just by doing it. The goal here is to create some context for the levels and missions that you're going to go on in my game, but I don't have a complete story yet. I have an idea who some of the main characters are going to be and who the main factions are and how their relationships will unfold. So hopefully that'll be enough to go off and make a start. So first I drew the basic shape of the map and decided where each faction was going to reside. Then I decided to place some geography like the main river and mountains to separate areas a little more. In this coloured version you can see I added a bit of desert and then ice just above the land but I thought this was a little predictable. So I re-sketched the entire island, made the shape a bit less obvious, ditched the desert, made the top left part look as if the land was so cold it's breaking off and now we're no longer stereotyping arcs into a hot environment. Instead we're probably going to see them wrapped in polar bear parka coats to stay warm instead. So with that in mind, the world is going to have a ongoing story which I won't give away too much, but other missions and areas will unlock on the map as you decide to venture into the lands that you want to see more of. The tricky part for me here is going to be displaying the effects of the ongoing story onto the world without making the timeline seem all over the place. Essentially all the X's are levels but the gold ones will advance the story. Personally I think allowing the player to see which missions are going to progress the story is a better option just because if they complete a mission and wonder why a new X hasn't extended from it then they may be a bit confused. Plus other people just prefer to finish the quest line as soon as possible so when they do that if they enjoyed the game they can go back and carry on playing new content just a warning this is an extremely rough draft and is 9999 percent out of 100 likely to change but for now it gives me a visualization of my map and it acts as an initial iteration what i want to do next is import this world map into the game and make it fully interactable basically when opening the world map each quest will run a line of code to check that the player has unlocked that quest so point b may check that point a was completed before showing itself this will stop players from seeing it and also stop any clues being given away as to where the quest line might be heading. I've been making progress on the settlement scene and whilst at that I've also created a variation of the background for our first level. I can feel every iteration of this environment become more and more aesthetically pleasing so who knows it may even change again. Focusing on our settlement we can see that we now have a quest board so interacting with that will pop open our map. There's a couple quests on there already but we can only see one since our character hasn't reached the next level yet. Next is Jove, he's going to be part of the core story, essentially our boat wrecked and he's the only other survivor that we've found. He'll act as your advisor giving you instructions on what you should be aiming to do next such as buildings to place or quests to go on. Like the quest board you can interact with him but if he has any new dialogue and you haven't spoke to him before then coming into range with him will trigger him. Well his dialogue. The last part of the settlement that I want to share is the plots. It's in a prototype stage so there's only a couple test buildings in there at the moment which don't cost anything to place. Once you've gathered enough gold from quests soon you'll be able to buy a blacksmith to work there and they'll be able to upgrade things for you. Or even an apothecary so you can carry more potions and have more in your tool belt. All you have to do is approach the building bench, select a plot and hit the buy button to place the building that you want. Buildings will also be upgradable and I do plan to redraw them so they appear to be more sophisticated or have more people working in them if they're a higher level. In my roadmap video I said that player settlements, quests etc will all be in version 0.5 so just know that right now it is in its prototype stage nor is it 100% likely to stay the same. I do listen to the feedback I've received so far in my discord so if you want to try out the game and share your thoughts in there then join us in the link below everyone is welcome. Also I do still have a list of all the things that you guys asked for in my last video to be in the settlement. So far I've had to draw a lot of stuff and a lot of logic to figure out for these features so I do plan to get around to adding these little community touches even if it's just for fun. I'd also love for people to share any building ideas they'd like to see other than a blacksmith or an apothecary below in the comments. Thanks again for watching and if you haven't already please like and subscribe.